V Collection 9 from Arturia is here, and as we've come to expect, it's full of analog synths, digital synths, organs, electric pianos, and acoustic pianos. But it's what's new in this massive collection which has me really excited. Hi folks, I'm Mike, and I hope you're well. I don't think I've ever been as excited about a new V Collection as V Collection 9 from Arturia. Not only have they added some new instruments, but they've also added a new category of instruments, which I'm absolutely loving. Now, whilst I do want to focus in this video on what's new in this collection, just give me one minute to recap what was included in previous versions. What you're seeing now are some of the incredible analog synths contained in the V Collection, mostly classic and revered instruments from the 70s and 80s, often even buying one of the original would now cost you thousands of dollars. But now, not only can you have these iconic synths at your fingertips, but Arturia liked to give them a little twist that was not in the original. As if that were not enough, there's also a fine collection of digital synths, which, dare I say it, may be even better than the originals, given that you now have the benefit of Arturia's well-thought-out interfaces to program them. Now, I personally have a soft spot for the beautifully recreated vintage organs and pianos. Many of these can be found on classic recordings from the 60s and 70s, and I regularly make use of these on my tracks. They are faithful and have depth, but at the same time always contain a new trick or two. And finally, whilst Piano V is classed as one instrument, it actually contains a number of grand, upright and quirky acoustic pianos. Now amongst these existing instruments, there's been some important rebuilds for version nine. The CS80V has had both a brand new sound engine and rebuilt DSP modeling. Piano V has had its modeling engine for its 12 acoustic pianos rebuilt. And what was previously a hybrid instrument, the Prophet V, has been split into two new instruments, the Prophet 5V and the Prophet VSV, both built from scratch. Now, I'm going to leave my two favorite new instruments to the end of this video. But first of all, I want to take a quick look at two new synths which have been added to this version. When I was a teenager back in the mid-1980s, I was very fortunate that my high school music department had a couple of synthesizers that we were allowed to muck around on. Now, one of those was the Yamaha DX9. I don't have such great memories of that. But the other one was the Korg MS20, which I thought was a whole load of fun. So I'm so nostalgically pleased that Arturia have added their version of this to the V Collection 9. Now I'll talk about why I think it was so much fun in a moment but first of all I want to let you know that when I played around with this for the first time yesterday I played a sequence of notes on the keyboard and this came out. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair to you very quickly afterwards I just had to add this to it as well. Yes, I instantly started to write an 80s classic uh, 40 years too late. But it does reek, doesn't it, of 80s-ness, which I really actually love. Now, why was it so much fun to play with? Well, I think compared to the DX9, which had all these menus hidden away uh, with that LCD screen and a big, thick manual, um, with this, you had knobs to play with. And the great thing about knobs is you can just get an immediate... Uh, change to the sound or usually you can sometimes you can't um, so for example if I was just to play that little sequence again and mess around with this high pass filter the low pass filter you know you can hear that uh, change in sound right away it's very sort of organic okay so I think there's a UI term for this when there's sort of one knob per a feature or something let me know in the comments down below if you know what that uh, clever term is now added to that on this particular synth we also had these sort of patch cables so you could reroute um, the audio to different parts of the synth and you can see that here I can grab a cable and I can move it around and plug it in now what's great about this is that when they remake something like this and I think they're kind of faithful to the sound of it they can also add some things to it which were not there in the original, in my memory at least. Um, for example, there's a sequencer here, um, and then there's also, we've got a whole bunch of effects. And this is really one of the major advantages of having, you know, a software synth like this. Not only to mention that, you know, old synths uh, may be breaking down, they may take some maintenance, you've got to plug them in, etc. Um, you do have these extra advantages. Now, I will talk about another one of those advantages 
as I play another patch here, I'm just going to go to this one. Eight, sorry, a patch? <laughs> Preset. Ancient Wind. Okay. Now, have a listen to this and let me know if you spotted what I was able to do with this that you couldn't do with an original MS-20. Did you spot it? Well, the thing about this was there was many notes at one time. It's polyphonic, so I was able to play some chords. The original MS-20 was, was a monophonic uh, synthesizer, which was probably one of the only advantages it had over the poor old DX9. I'm giving the DX9 a bad name here. I did have some fun with it. Uh, but yeah, so you know we get the advantages now of being able well we've got the advantage of being able to have these things that the original instrument didn't have which i think is just fantastic but there's a certain sound to this instrument which does take me back um and the strange thing was at the time i wasn't really into that kind of music but um now when i hear it, oh, it just warms my heart and i enjoy it immensely so the last thing i want to mention is this is quite intimidating isn't it to be fair as a teenager i just messed around with these knobs never read a manual and if i'd wanted to create a specific sounds that i had in my head i would have probably struggled with that i was just making random sounds but what's great about this instrument and i have to say i think all of the arterial instruments in this collection are there is the tutorial section so i'll just open it up now i just have to click on this cog up here and you, there's a bunch of different settings but over there on the right we can go to tutorial now when you start to open it up it's going to give you a warning that you're going to lose your settings that's fine i'm just going to go to sound generators though for example and you can see this it's very interactive in what it does it, it loads up a particular sound for you to experiment with it walks you through you know how all of the different things work here and it highlights the areas of the interface that it's teaching you about at the moment i found a number of their tutorials for a non-synth guy like me, uh, very, very helpful indeed. So you can see, I'll go, uh, for example, to uh, the amplifier section here, click on that, and you can see it's highlighted that section. It's really worth taking a little bit of time working through these if you're not up to scratch with, you know, sort of soundscaping and things. Um, I think they're really, really good. And as I say, it's not just on this instrument. This is kind of across the board now. And actually, I think they do it with their effects as well. Um, I think it's one of the hidden treasures. Check it out, you know, if you get this hold of this collection, it's really going to speed up your learning process. But this is not the only new synth in the lineup. Now, in the interest of time, I'm just going to quickly go over this new addition to the collection. This is the SQ80V, which is based upon a synthesizer from the late 80s from Ensonic, which was the SQ80, which in itself was a souped up version of the ESQ. Q1. Listen to me sounding all knowledgeable after I hit Wikipedia this morning. What I love after I've played around with this instrument um, is the fact that although it's from the 80s, now it doesn't sound dated. It doesn't have me sounding feeling so nostalgic, but I think this is sort of more useful for modern soundscaping, in my opinion, at least. Anyway, it's very rich in sound. I'm just going to go through three of the many many let's have a look this the many many presets that you have in here just going to go through three which i have liked uh, the first one sounds like this and just to demonstrate something a bit different this one bouncy ball built bouncy balls bouncy bells I love this kind of stuff, you know. And then finally, something called Ooze. I could find uses for that all the time. Now, interestingly, what they've done here um, with the interface in terms of, you know, creating your own sounds or adjusting these presets is the kind of main macro controls they have right on the front here. So you've got access to them right away. So you can make changes there just using your mouse. Okay. Or you can get more in depth, of course, if you go over to this synthesis tab here. And I've got to say, I just love the way Arturo designed these interfaces. Even for a noob like me to any kind of soundscaping, there are a lot of 
fun to play around with and i think it's very important to keep fun in your music production and finally over here we also have some effects as well the usual kind of affair with that kind of thing so look i think a very nice addition to the collection i'm sure some of for some of you this is actually famous for me it's not i'm afraid sorry about that but I'm sure you're going to love playing around with it. Now, a few weeks ago, I told you about a plugin called Augmented Strings Intro, which was free at the time to celebrate the launch of the new Augmented series from Arturia. And I guessed at the time that it would be a simplified version of a much better plugin where you had more customization through advanced controls. And I'm pleased to say I guessed right augmented strings from Arturia has all the great sounds that we heard previously but you really get to customize them to your own taste now for those of you who did see my previous video about the free intro version of this plugin you'll be looking at this and thinking hang on has anything changed here well i can promise you a lot has changed i mean there's a whole bunch more presets for it for example but that's not really where it's at it's the amount of control you have over this instrument which has really changed but before we get into that let's just do a quick recap of the main controls on this front page okay i think they call this the play page and the most prominent of those controls is the morph control and this reveals the true nature of these augmented instruments i'm just going to play the piece of music that i use right in the intro of this video and i'm just going to push this morph control up here so you can hear what's happening So for those of you who haven't heard this instrument before, what's happening there is we started off, didn't we, with a sort of a pretty basic string sound there. And then as I push this morph control over, um, we started to hear this sort of synthesized sound. And this is the sort of basis of these instruments. They are made up of two layers of sounds. Um, each of those layers has two parts or two possible parts, by the way. And we're morphing them together. We're not mixing them together. This is not a mix control. It's not just blending the audio together. This is actually morphing the values as we, um, uh, as we move this control over. Very, very organic when you get to use it. And I think it's something, it's one of those instruments you'll definitely be moving these controls around during a performance to get the best out of them, I reckon. Now, I quickly want to go over three of the other controls here. Not all of them, but three. And this will give you a sort of an understanding of what's really going on and what's really clever about this instrument. The top three controls, color, time, and motion, also affect the sound but not in the same way with every single instrument or with every single preset we'll get onto why that is later when we delve deep but first of all let's just recap on what these do color affects the harmonic content of the sound we'll just use that Time affects anything to do with time. So that's going to be things like attack and release, for example. Um, and then motion affects anything to do with modulation. Now, being a little bit vague about exactly what they do affect. And as I say, I'm going to get to that later. It's just one of the best features or best parts of this instrument. But in order to start to understand how we now can make our own sounds, because we couldn't really do that um, in the free version, we have to go to the advanced tab. It's always the advanced tab, which gets me really excited with Arturia. Click on that. And here is revealed those two layers, layer A, layer B. Those are the two things that we're morphing. And as I say, each has two parts. You can see one here. You can see another one over here. Now, they can be made up of samples, they can be made up of synthesis, okay, so they can vary from one sound to another. And obviously, once you've, you know, say, loaded up a sound, I'll just load up a cello sound here, okay, then you can start to make changes um, using the controls here and then also the filters at the bottom here as well. I'm not going to go into all the details of all these controls, but you can see from this page basically how the controls are made up we also have a modulation page here um, lfos functions etc etc i love the interface here i have to say i just want to play with these interfaces i just want to use them organic intuitive really really fun even for a non-synthesis guy like me then we have an arpeggiator page this is different to the intro version although it's the same in the sense that we can arpeggiate 
um, the velocity and the gate. We're going to come back to this one, I think, later. Um, then we have an effects page where we can add a couple of effects to each of the layers there. Um, lots and lots of you know effects that we can add in there. And then finally, I think this is a really, really important page. It ties back to the play page, and this is the macro page. This is where we actually control, I'll just go to the sound section of this. This is where we actually control what's happening when we adjust those controls on the front page or the play page. If we go back to that, remember there's morph, there's color, there's time, there's motion. And you can see at the top of this macros page, color, morph, time, and motion. What's happening here, for example, with morph, where we're morphing between the two layers, we get a lot of control about what actually happens there. So we can control what the actual volume change is with each of those layers and with each part within those layers. And then we can also control kind of how that happens with a curve here. So it's happening in a linear fashion by default, but we, as you can see, I'm just pushing uh, the curve around there. So um, it's very intuitive. It's a lot of fun to do, and you can really make these sounds your own, the controls your own, if you like. Um, on the front page there, or the play page. And as I say, and you quickly saw it there, we also have a section for those effects controls, which we also saw, I'll remind you, in the bottom half of that play page. So much control in this instrument. But if you don't fancy getting into all of that, and I don't really see why you wouldn't, because it is so much fun, but if you don't fancy that, there is so many presets i'll just go to explore here there's just so many presets which make use of both very natural sounding instruments so almost uh, almost sort of natural acoustic sounding instruments and some stuff which is kind of out of this world not acoustic sounding at all i do have four liked ones um already like the first one you've already heard was beautiful swell um i also have deepening liked here i think this just demonstrates how sort of acoustic you can be if you perhaps just need say something like that an acoustic bass sound um we have another one here which is very acoustic pop staccato okay and then finally i'm just going to go to orange here um because this one doesn't sound particularly acoustic it does make good use of that arpeggiator and i kind of want to mention the arpeggio a little bit again I've just really enjoyed messing around with it. I'll go to it here. Simple controls. You can understand this in just a couple of minutes, okay? You can see we're arpeggiating velocity and gait here, okay? We can extend the steps in the arpeggiator just by dragging out like this. I'll just change that to, say, eight steps. Mess around with some of the values of the steps, yeah, quickly, like so. We'll just play that again. Yeah, just really easy to use like that. We can see that we can actually have a different number of steps for the gate and for the velocity. So that really mixes things up and makes things sound natural. And if you really want to mix things up again, for example, you could go to this um, randomize feature where we can control how much sort of random variation there is in this case on the velocity. Love that. And then at the top, we've got these controls, which is the chord control. So on that step, if that's selected, the actual full chord that you're playing is going to be played, whereas on the other sort of steps, it's going to play individual notes of that chord, yeah? Like, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is just how well they've done, in my opinion, with the intuitive nature of the interface here. And it also you know, really encourages you to make things sound a little bit more random, a little bit more organic. I love that about this instrument. And this is not the only augmented instrument that we have new to this collection. Now, this has been kind of a long video, so thank you so much for making it this far with me. Perhaps you'll consider liking and subscribing. Thank you. Now, this next section is much quicker to explain. You'll be glad to hear. This is augmented voices, and it's quicker to explain because it's almost identical to augmented strings, except it's voice-based. The front page or the play page is just the same controls. And if we go over to advanced, we've got those same 
two layers with two parts. We've got modulation, arpeggiator, effects, and also those macro controls as well. So there's not much else for me to explain except for the fact there's a whole bunch of presets for you to play with. And I've got it down to my four favorites in my liked section here. Let's start off with bouncing vowels and see how that sounds. And as I play these presets, I will be messing around with the morph and some of the other controls because that's really the heart of these augmented instruments, how you blend these uh, two layers together. I mean, there's so many uses for those kinds of sounds over so many genres of music, I reckon. The next one that I sort of earmarked was this one, uh, Coming Storm. Let's have a listen to that. <laughs> I reckon that's really lending itself to some dance or electronic music there. Um, let's have a listen to something quite different, which is voiced piano. I mean, this is just to demonstrate there's not just those sort of ethereal sort of sounds, but I have to say those ethereal kind of moody sounds are my favorites let's finish off with something called what's this one called again a soul to borrow okay let's have a listen to this i love this Now, what I love about what Arturia have done here is they've added instruments that when I load them up, I'm immediately inspired to make music with them. That's a good sign of a great virtual instrument. Now, I did kind of skip over all of the other instruments which are in this collection. They're from the previous versions. If you want to find out more about those, then do check out my previous videos which I've made about version 8 of this collection. Click just here to do that and enjoy yourself.